Happening now, the city of Jamestown says they've given out nearly a half a million dollars in economic assistance, how local businesses can apply for what's left. Plus, why New York State's governor says it will take a while to recover from COVID-19 impacts. Today is the last day of scattered afternoon showers and storms. Then we turn drier for the end of the week before more rain returns our way for the second half of the weekend. I'll talk about it next. The News at Noon starts now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. So far, the city of Jamestown has given out a nearly a half a million dollars in economic assistance to local businesses and renters in the community during the COVID-19 pandemic. Crystal Serdic, the Jamestown Director of Development, announced the news this morning. She says in total, more than $469,000 of COVID-19 recovery grants from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development have been allocated. A total of 18 local shops have so far received funding. Businesses and tenants were required to provide proof of economic impact due to the pandemic. Certic says any business owner who could benefit from the assistance should contact her office sooner rather than later. Get your applications in as quickly as you can. Um, our funding is very quickly depleting um, and we've got new applicants every single day. Uh, so where, you know, we have limited funding, um, you know, it could be gone today, it could be gone tomorrow. Um, so don't hesitate. Businesses have been able to apply for grants of up to $20,000. They can apply at jamestowny.gov. Well, New York's governor says it could take years for the state to recover from this pandemic. On a conference call with reporters yesterday, Governor Andrew Cuomo said the state is facing a $30 billion budget hole over the next two years because of it. He says the state will need federal help to make that money up. Now, in the meantime, Congress is working on a deal for a new coronavirus relief package. According to the proposed bill, Cuomo says schools may get some federal funding, but local governments and hospitals could take a big hit. The federal bill, as proposed by the Senate, currently says you would have to fully fund education even if they don't fully fund the state's shortfall, okay? So we have a 14 and 16, $30 billion shortfall over two years. They provide funding for education uh, and say you have to fully fund education, even if they don't fund the state, in this case, $30 billion. If that is the situation, It'd be good news for education. We fully fund the schools, but then it would mean that the hospitals and the local governments take an even greater cut. The governor also says New York is making improvements in the fight against COVID-19. Of the more than 62,000 people tested just yesterday, 715 were positive. That brings the infection rate to 1.1%. Well, first-time unemployment claims rose for a second week in a row. It's another sign of America's economic recovery is struggling thanks to the surge of new coronavirus cases elsewhere. 1.4 million people filed for initial jobless claims last week. That's up 12,000 from the week before, which was the first increase in four months. Meanwhile, 17 million people filed continued claims. That counts workers who have filed for unemployment at least two weeks in a row. The Jamestown Lakers disabled hockey program is canceling its upcoming season because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In a press conference yesterday, officials announced that the season has been called off and that they hope to resume play next year. The season was slated to start in late September. Program director Rodney Colsty says the decision was made two weeks ago after discussions with staff and officials. He stressed that player safety is the program's first priority. We have kids that have been through so many surgeries and different things that they're 
I think the risk was greater. And, you know, not having a sport is, been on sports all my life and it's not the end of the world. So we, we I'd rather be, we'd rather be safe. Start up next year all fresh and, and hopefully uh, this will be all behind us. Now, in addition to general safety concerns, travel restrictions and what some on the team call red tape created too many obstacles holding up the season's play. Well, we thank you for joining us here for WNY News Now as we uh, make our way uh, through the last week of August. Got to say hello to Joseph. Hopefully you're doing well. Great to see you here on the broadcast. Good to see Justin, Brandy, David, uh, Topsy, Bush, Laura, Wendy, Charlie, and uh, Ryan as well. Hopefully everybody is having a good day. We thank you uh, for joining us here on WNY News Now. Let's now get a check of our first offense weather forecast with Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. And so far, Dakota, the day looks to be shaping up to be a pretty nice one out there. Yes, but uh, we'll have a few showers to go through. And Jay, this is not the last week of August. This is the last week of July. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I was You're already a month ahead, ahead of yourself. Where are <laughs> I, you? Uh, uh, you know what? It said August in my teleprompter. I don't know if I wrote that or what, but that's so silly. Okay, hmm. it's the last week of July. <laughs> we'll have to launch some sort of internal investigation on <laughs> yeah. that one. Who wrote the script today? We'll find out. Anyway, uh, here's a live look coming from Salamanca. Lots of clouds around 73, not a lot of wind, but the dew point once again up there, basically in the lower to mid 60s today. Just a few little speckles of showers that are moving through basically the southern portion of Chautauqua County and then uh, basically a western Cat County. And uh, there's a little shower here north of Randolph. No lightning being detected in this, but again, this will continue through the afternoon and not everybody is going to get wet. Same story as yesterday, but we won't have some weather today like we had yesterday. Monthly rainfall total at the airport now up to 7.31 inches for the month. That means we have a 2.62 inch uh, surplus for the month. So we really don't need any more rain, but yeah, we've got a little bit more rain coming today. So through the afternoon, scattered afternoon, showers and storms like it was yesterday, but there will be no severe weather today. That's the good news. A bit muggy with mostly cloudy intervals in between 75 to 80 with a light northwest wind less than 10 miles per hour. Two days of fantastic weather coming our way for tomorrow and Saturday and then more rain as we head into early next week. We'll talk about it in a few. Justin. All right, Dakota, thank you. Congressman Tom Reed says he's working to include child care funding in the next round of COVID relief. Reed spoke to the issue during his weekly conference call. The congressman says it is key to make sure child care providers have stable funding to keep them operating in order to reopen more of the economy. He says the bill creates a blueprint to move forward in securing such funding. That sets the framework for how we're going to provide nine months worth of direct assistance to our child care providers uh, from federal resources so that our child care providers uh, know that they will have the support necessary to stay open and to serve uh, the public and their customers, if you would. Those are our children, obviously. We want to make sure the child care providers have the uh, resources available to them. Now, Reed explains the framework allows states to design specific programs to distribute the funding and ensure stability. Well, starting next month, a local horse center is stopping its operations. Lisa Hagland, Heritage President and CEO, says that their Homestead Stables Equestrian Center will pause all operations and will, while shut down, conduct a feasibility study to determine what the center's future might look like. Hagland says throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, Heritage has been forced to suspend Stables events, lessons and clinics. The Stables also offers boarding training lessons and a therapeutic writing program for veterans and the elderly. Haglin says the pandemic's economic impacts have caused a heavy financial burden, forcing the group to make difficult decisions across the board. Coming up next, the latest on a police crackdown of drunk drivers. And later, good news for some Starbucks lovers. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. With coverage that matters. 
This is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. When you're on the go, stay in the know by downloading the WNY News Now mobile app. Stay up to date on local news, weather, and sports that matter to you. Plus, subscribe to breaking news and weather alerts from the team that puts coverage first. In addition, watch news as it happens with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network. Download the WNY News Now app right now. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back. A Cherry Creek man has been charged in connection with sex crimes that allegedly occurred over the 4th of July holiday weekend in Mayville. The Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office charged 35-year-old Scott Delahoy with two counts of forcible touching, third-degree sexual misconduct, and false imprisonment. Deputies say Delahoy turned himself in yesterday. He was arraigned at the Chautauqua County Jail and released on his own recognizance. Meanwhile, the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office says that 41 vehicle stops, arrests, and summons were issued, part of the county stop DWI program over the 4th of July holiday. Sheriff Jim Quattrone in a media release this morning says his office worked with municipal law enforcement agencies and the New York State Police during the effort. The county stopped a DWI program is funded by drinking and driving fines collected from convicted drunk drivers with additional funding from the governor's traffic safety committee. Now the program went from Friday, July 3rd and continued through Monday, July 6th. Well, today marks six months since the World Health Organization declared a, the coronavirus outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. And as John Lawrence reports, health experts say the virus still poses a serious threat today. The United States has yet to flatten the coronavirus curve. It's like whack-a-mole with hotspots all over this country. It's just going to keep popping up if we don't do something nationally. President Trump is calling on governors to reopen their states, but his coronavirus task force is warning the 21 red states on this map that stronger restrictions might be needed. The yellow states are also under the microscope. We've got to help the public understand you've got to be part of the solution. And if not, I can't even imagine what the next 6 to 12 months are like without a vaccine. It will be close to the gates of hell. Johns Hopkins University reports the U.S. recorded 50,000 deaths in just over two months. And the resurgence seen in the South and West is now heading toward the Midwest. We're starting to see that in some of the states now, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, uh, and other Indiana. The bottom line is health experts say the U.S. has to do more to fight this pandemic. We have a whole set of new testing capabilities that can give results in 15 minutes or half an hour. Those tests exist today. The federal government could partner with those companies, ramp our production, and make sure that there are tens of millions of those tests available around the country within weeks. I'm John Lawrence reporting. John, thank you. The Food and Drug Administration says it may issue emergency use authorization of a vaccine within weeks once one is proven to work. Well, it's coming back. Starbucks's famous pumpkin spice latte, that is. The coffee chain announced the drink will make a comeback sometime this year, but it didn't give us a specific date. Now, last year, pumpkin spice lattes returned in late August. You may also be able to get the popular drink quicker than ever before in a company's earnings call. Starbucks also announced more locations will have curbside pickup, drive throughs and mobile-only pickup locations. More than 400 Starbucks locations will close as the company undergoes those plans. The goal is to move forward with more convenient coffee houses. Well, we thank so much, uh, everyone, for joining us here as we close out the last week of July. 
Let's check in with the comments and uh, say hello to Max. Hopefully you're doing well. Great to see you on the broadcast today. Good to see uh, Sean, Joseph, um, and Pam as well. Hopefully you all are having a good day. We uh, thank you so much for sticking with us uh, as your trusted source for local news and information. And part of that effort to get you information is our trusted weather forecast with Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. And Dakota, if you were out yesterday, maybe visiting the Starbucks in Lakewood, you mm -hmm. could have got a little wet yesterday afternoon. Yes, uh, storms came off Lake Erie basically around 1, 2 o'clock yesterday and moved inland. How about this shot, Jay? You took this picture from uh, Lakewood. This is from the Chautauqua Mall, and uh, this is from actually a severe storm that was back over Sherman. So you're looking back into it. And you can see all of the clouds starting to come into Lakewood. That is a fantastic shot. I mean, that was just great. I mean, we were drooling over that when we saw that in the weather office yesterday. And uh, if you have any pictures or videos of the weather, Hunters WX on Twitter, the First Defense Weather page on Facebook, and make sure you use the hashtag MyLocalWX. And those storms were severe yesterday. We actually had some wind damage that occurred. Uh, there actually was a report of a tree and power line falling on a house on State Route 394 in the town of Chautauqua yesterday. So all of these uh, little icons you see here, here are basically storm reports that are uh, the uh, thunderstorm wind damage. And there was another report over in uh, Delavan in Cattaraugus County. So again, you know, I say it all the time, especially during weather coverage, these warnings are not put out just to get us attention. And, you know, I guarantee you the Weather Service does not do that. And again, that is because of damaging winds uh, those storms had. And again, we told you that yesterday, a couple storms in isolated nature could have contained some damaging winds. Satellite and radar composite. This is one hour uh, worth of satellite and radar. You can see not a whole lot there. There's that little uh, shower right there that's basically north of Jamestown. This is going to be going into Cattaraugus County, but just lots of clouds around. Now, the reason we still have uh, showers around is because of this little front right here. Now, this front has kind of been slow moving. It's been just very slowly marching its way to the east. So as long as the front is still here, we're going to maintain the chance for showers and thunderstorms. Now, usually when they pop up in the afternoon, it's because of a tropical air mass. That's not the case. It's because that front is just so slow to clear out of here. You can see as the front moves through, showers and thunderstorms are going to pop up once again today. No severe weather expected today like we had yesterday. That is the good news. That winds down tonight. Tonight will be fantastic. Then high pressure slides into the region, and that means Friday will be fantastic. No chance of rain, even though the models showing a few little blips. Nope, not going to happen. And then Saturday will be another fantastic day. Then Sunday will turn a lot more wetter as we actually get a low pressure area to go directly over the area. Right now, downtown from uh, the Doubletree Hotel, just lots of clouds. 70 out there, but the dew point up at 66. And the reason the dew points up is because the front has it moved through. After the cold front moves through, then we'll start to back the humidity down once again. New tropical storm down here in the Caribbean. It is tropical storm Isaias. That is how you pronounce it. We don't name these things. We just forecast them. But a big area of convection occurred last night. So basically, the National Hurricane Center upgraded this to a tropical storm, Isaias. This is going to be moving into into uh, basically, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, east of uh, east of Puerto Rico, going into Hispaniola. Now, the one thing we have to keep an eye on is even though the current national uh, forecast track has this thing riding along the east coast of Florida and then riding up the east coast, we don't know yet because basically if you know Hispaniola it's very mountainous terrain and uh, tropical systems don't like mountainous areas they can often tear it apart so we have to wait for this system to move off Hispaniola to see how it behaves and what's left of it but again that's something we'll keep our eyes on as we go through the weekend zone forecast here the inland areas temperatures actually a little bit below average today or near the averages but uh, it's going to feel a little bit warmer with the humidity but a few rumbles uh, and uh, showers and storms through the afternoon how about the future? It's coming up now, 79 tomorrow and 79 Saturday. Two days of just fantastic weather. Enjoy it Sunday. There's that low uh, moving directly over the area. 80 degrees, widespread showers and storms. We maintain a few storms on Monday, 75 on Tuesday. Nice and refreshing. We stay comfy on Wednesday as well, but just a small chance of a shower both day. Justin. All right, Dakota. Thank you. Straight ahead, we tell you about Mr. Hunterelli's favorite holiday. Woohoo! Stay with us.
You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24 7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today, email our news desk, or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Welcome back. Not that this is even a tough sell, but you have an extra reason to indulge with some cheesecake today because July 30th is National Cheesecake Day. The creamy, luscious dessert dates back to ancient Greece, but it's currently popular and uh, was helped by the invention of pasteurized cream cheese in the early 1900s. Now, these days, there's a type of cheesecake for Pretty much everybody's taste buds. The most popular styles include New York, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania Dutch, and country style cheesecakes. To celebrate the holiday, just make one or buy some cheesecake and dig in. You can share the experience on social media using the hashtag National Cheesecake Day. Mm, it looks uh, delicious, certainly. And I can tell you, Dakota, I love chocolate mousse cheesecake, mm -hmm. my favorite so sweet and strangely refreshing for it being chocolate. What's your yeah. favorite? I mean, I, I like, you know, the, um, you know, I'm more of a traditionalist New York style, but I think my all time favorite is probably triple chocolate. Chocolate cheesecake with a chocolate graham cracker crust mm. and chocolate chips and chocolate uh, strizzle on the top. Mm. Mm, that's that's got to be yummy. That's good. Uh, I, I don't think I would ever say no. If that makes sense. No, I mean so. you know what cheesecake. It is so peaceful because you know, if you know me, one of my favorite TV shows in the world is The Golden Girls. And you know, anytime they have a problem, what do they do? Go into the kitchen, grab a cheesecake, and sit around the table and gab and try to solve a problem. So you know that's what you do. You just grab a cheesecake, sit down at the kitchen table with your best friends. And if you have a problem, talk about it over cheesecake. And you know, Dakota has implemented that here a few times. Yeah. A few times. You, you forced us all into your weather office and you've said, sit down and we're going to fix this. Yep. <laughs> no cheesecake, though. Although I will say, you know, part. the tension here is not very much. We don't have a whole lot of tension here. But, you know, sometimes things get a little tight. Yeah, and, if you work uh, in the news so. business, I can yeah. I can tell you that uh, sometimes uh, emotions run high, especially when you know we have pretty tough deadlines sometimes, and things happen at the same time. And uh, you know, like this morning, I had two interviews at the same exact time, mm -hmm. which was fine. But it's like you know, it is what it is. And and I think that you know we all help each other, and that's the beautiful thing about WNY News now is you know super tight knit, even with COVID and people working from home. Um, it's it's great that we're able to work together and I hope sooner than later Dakota we can be back in the same studio together because I know I, I think it should we, we can celebrate with a little cheesecake yes hopefully. we should we should break out a bottle of well actually no I would say bottle of champagne but I don't like champagne how about wine yeah that would work a little vino it's after 12 so they say that's yeah it's five o'clock somewhere right Jay yeah well 12 is the new five exactly <laughs> But you're not going to get Amy. wasted away again in Margaritaville, are you? <laughs> right. Have Brandy, a cheeseburger in paradise? Uh, oh, my gosh. I love it. <laughs> Let us know what you think in the comments. What's your, what's your favorite cheesecake? Um, I want to pivot here for a minute and give a little shout-out uh, while, while we have some time to uh, some brand-new uh, masks that we got. Yes. Thanks to our friends at JRSC Digital. 
in Jamestown. They produced some pretty awesome looking WNY News Now masks there. Dakota has a better look there at it than, than I do. But I like these ones because they aren't the conventional ear loops. So basically yeah. what you do is it goes around your neck, the back of your neck, the bottom half of it, and then you can let it hang. And then if somebody comes within that six feet social distancing, you just pop yeah. it up. There you go. I like these. These are yeah, really, really nice. nice. Now, unfortunately, these are not for sale. Outside. These are limited yeah. edition, but um, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, some good advertising, so. Yeah, know. there you go. We In can... the memo, it said we have to wear them everywhere we go. Yeah. <laughs> We're like walking billboards. Yes, exactly. Uh, well, Rory said to me yesterday, he's like, well, how much are you going to pay anyway. me? It's like he, he asked how much, right? He's like, how much do these cost? And I'm like, oh, we're giving them for free. A and he's like, no, how much are you going to pay me to wear it out in the public? <laughs> right. Well, you know, a lot of people do that anyway. It's like, yeah. you know, everybody goes to the stores in the mall, like, you know, American Eagle and whatnot. And we're all walking billboards because we all have yeah. like, you know, the American yeah. Eagle, Eagle right. or the Hollister Eagle on us. So it's like, you know, we're walking billboards anyway for the brands we like. So yeah. why not be a walking billboard for the best news agency in the entire Western Southern tier? Don says she go. likes original cheesecake. That's a good one. You can't go wrong <laughs> with it. Get a little strawberry on top. So, yeah. Walking billboards. I like Exactly. It. Should we do weather? <laughs> yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. So let's talk about it for tonight here. Tonight, fantastic night. 55 to 65. A few clouds. Otherwise, no rain. Tomorrow will be fantastic. We keep the sunshine, cooler air, and lower humidity through Saturday. So that'll be your pick day of the weekend. Justin. All right, Dakota. Thank you. Only thing is, no matter what kind of mask you wear, they're always hot. It is what it is. That's Especially if you it. wear glasses. Yeah, uh, and you know these Spray actually your glasses don't fog. With the fogger. They they have a little metal piece. I don't know if you've tried yours on yet. Like we literally just got these uh, like ten minutes ago, but they got a little metal piece that goes around your nose. So okay, it it doesn't fog my glasses as much as other ones, but it is. Better. That's gonna That'll do it for nice. us today. Of course, news continues 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com. We're leaving you with this live shot outside of our downtown studios. Hope to see you back here tomorrow for our TGIF edition. Have a great day.